Uh, I want to start with the Carlton Football Club. I think this is the first time for a long, long time you can say that Carlton United is brewing. Is uh, they are a club in unity at the moment, Hutto. I love, I love what they've done under Vossi. I really do. And I think every week we see something different. Their, their evolution from just a team that wanted to bash the opposition and and win the hard way. It was, they were always difficult to play against, but you could move the ball at times, and they relied on maybe some talent here or there to save them. I just think they're the complete model at the moment, and I think this man's done an amazing job, Michael Voss, in getting this club as one. Doesn't matter who represents them. They've got more players on the sidelines than most. Saad, McGovern, Chera, Martin, Motlop, um, Cunningham, Fogarty, they're all, they're all first pick 23 players, mm. and they're not there. But it didn't matter that they weren't there because the system stacks up. The belief is there. And I just, just see them play, and I, and I think this is, sometimes success is just a look. You don't have to ask for anything. You don't have to demand. You're just looking in the other person's eyes and you know they're with you. I think that's happening at Carlton. I really do. I'm, I'm so excited about what they've been able to do, not necessarily with the way they play and the numbers and all that sort of stuff, and we'll get to that. Um, I, I just think right now you know what you're going to get from Carlton. Forward of the ball, they're dangerous. In the middle, they, they, they haven't been at their absolute best until the weekend, and they mauled the GWS Giants in there. And down back, it will only get better when those um, half-back flankers return. They haven't, play, they haven't finished top four at the end of the home and away season for 24 years. Mm. So they haven't had the luxury of, you know, they had two MCG finals last year, then had to go to the Gabba. I, I just feel that this year it'll be MCG, MCG, and who knows. So it, I, I'm oh, excited. I can imagine all those Carlton fans well, out yeah, there. I, I think but what, yesterday, you, midway through the third, you're starting to get, oh, this, you know, with all the players out, they yeah. could have turned up. They, they didn't. That was a great nah, Against good opposition, yeah. they had, had some positives to, to speak about as well. But, you know, the, the coach was under pressure last year, didn't phase him. He just got on with the job. I, I, I really think that they are, that they are the profile and, and a United club charging at this next opportunity. You, you see it with one or two teams a year. It doesn't always work out. But get excited, Carlton fans. What is positive? I think there's, they can win in all different ways, can't they? Like, they can win defensively. They can win by scoring. We spoke about their stoppage game, Kingy, but they've improved their turnover game. They win the close ones. And if all's not working, they've got some star power that can drag them over the line if needed. Like, they do tick nearly every box at the moment. And now the depth is also getting great opportunities. So, yeah. I think it's more than that, though. I think, I think that... Momentum. The, the, just the it's feel. momentum. It's, it's the belief that, that mm. they actually know they're good. And sometimes it takes a while to get to that point where you, you hope you're good enough. Oh, yep. gee, I hope we can do this, I hope we can do that. There's no hoping at Carlton anymore. It's let's just do what we're here to do. Let's be diligent enough and professional enough to support one another. And I, I think we see it now. So I, I'm excited about the back half of the year. But all right, back to Marvel Stadium yesterday. And it was a thrilling... It was exciting to be there with the Carlton crowd. 40,000 is going to be huge. Bigger again at the MCG next Saturday. Uh, they turned it on, the big guys, in the third quarter, didn't they? They finally got going, Charlie, Harry and Tom DeConing. And that's a significant uh, factor of the game because if they are going to play the two rucks, him being able to kick three goals and give them the presence up forward is going to make a difference. But, of course, it all started with the, the bashing they gave in the middle and some lab analysis coming up from you, King, with thanks to Zero Online Accounting uh, to make your make doing business better. Uh, let's look at the science of what they did at centre bounce because we're starting to see this more and more. Fear the rear. So if guys take back position and want to push you under, then you're in a, you're in a bit of trouble. So as soon as your opponent takes that rear position, and they were stepping back eight, nine, ten metres from the drop zone to try and take back position, both teams. But Carlton, just they just refused to concede. And have a look how regularly... There's a big gap there. I mean, we've seen players charging in for drop of ball opportunities. Look at this. So they want back position, Carlton, and then if they get that, they go to work. Often it would fall and just the two ruckmen would have to go head-to-head. -head. So we saw De Koning yep. and we saw Pitnett have uh, good clearance days. Yes. So here, look, look, he, Tom Green's taken that far back by Cripps. He can't actually really recover. So in the end, he only has one clearance for the day. So from the middle. So look, look how far back they are. So uh, I other thought, teams will, go, will be ready for that, well, I they? think every team's trying to do this in their own way, but Carlton are just, are just forcing it on their opponents. And they smashed them out of the middle. 18 centre bounce clearances, six goals, five they kicked. From centre bounce clearances, you're done. You're gone here. This is over. So if you show your back, 
You've got to fear the rear against these guys because they will push you in and then they are gone. They'll explode forward. That, that, that's the Carlton that we saw middle of last year. Uh, and this was the only way they could beat you last year, was it was it clearance. So in terms of their centre bounce stuff, they've only had one better return. They kicked eight goals two against Gold Coast last year or the year before. They've only had one better return than six goals five in ten years. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing it, how it long a big it lasts day. in the game, wasn't it? It was unreal. And the combination now of Cripps and Walsh, the Batman and Robin yeah. in there was formidable. The amount of times Walsh just gets to Cripps's and Cripps knows where to give him the handball. Sam Walsh had 17 score involvements, the most ever for a Carlton play in a game of football. He was phenomenal. The outside, the, the outside. outside space and, mm. and the rear space is, is, is now the new black at centre bounces. You've just got to be so careful uh, what you expose yourself to. And you wanted to show us about Charlie Kerner. We see him go back. Yeah, we know he goes back late in games to try and save the game, but I thought it was a significant moment in the game. Six or seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Giants had kicked five unanswered goals in the term, six for the game to lead by 22 points. And you started to think, geez, they are dominating here. So Michael Voss made the decision with six and a half minutes to go in the second quarter to put Charlie Curnow behind the ball. And just by having him there stem the tide. So you see Toby Green, he likes to sneak out the back. That normally would have been a goal for him but by having Charlie Curnow there, it saved one opportunity. Then again, Toby Green sneaks out from the contest, as we've, as we've seen him do so often. Charlie Curnow was the spare defender, was able to mop it up. And just for a few minutes, they were able to wrestle the momentum. They stopped the Giants scoring, and what they did in that period of time is they kicked two goals of their own. So all of a sudden, they went into halftime only 10 points down, yeah. as opposed to 22 and potentially more, mm. and that wrestled back the momentum. And then they got to work in the third quarter. So I thought it was a great bit of coaching, great execution. It's not just save the game mode for Charlie Curnow, it's to stop the momentum, and it worked perfectly. But he has to call someone back. Too often he's matched yeah. up, and they sent Buckley down with him. Late in the game, they did, And yeah. you think, oh, why is he not free? Mm. If he's going down there as the free man, be the free man. Well, Matty Cottrell continues to prove what a valuable pickup he was and shows you can find players in different ways. Oh, I think that he's the game's most influential role player right now, Matty Cottrell. When he gets the ball, he has a happy knack of creating scores. He's better than a role player in a lot of ways, really. He's become really significant. He's had the same amount of score involvements as Isaac Rankin and Cam Rayner. Now, work that out where they are on the pay grade and the, uh, the importance to their teams internally. This guy understands the game. He knows what's required in terms of um, where the ball needs to go to create scores, what he needs to do in, in that function. So six goals this year he's kicked and 21 score involvements the last three weeks. Oh, I think he's a beauty. I think the Carlton fans know what they've got and, and continues to get free um, and getting forward of centre free, the best kind of free. And he signed a new three-year going into the, into the season. Oh, Matt, Matt, he might have got, he might have got under <laughs> yeah. for that. So Giants did a fair bit right for a fair bit of the game, and maybe it just shows how hard it is to win any more than five or six games in a row yeah. this year, and we're going to see that. But it's proved to be really costly for them because Toby Green, who just was got more and more grumpy as the game went on, mm. and he doesn't quite seem to be. He's lost his magic just a little bit for yeah. now, temporarily. But yeah. it's, he's going to have a week on the sideline after the MRO ruling on that, and uh, he'll have company for the game against Brisbane because Jesse Hogan had the same. Are we, are we happy with these outcomes? I, I don't think Jesse Hogan should be missing a week for that. I, I know what they're trying to do, the AFL, but these sort of push and shoves and they accidentally slip high. There's no damage done there. I don't think he deserves a week for that. I, I do as long as everyone else does. That, that, yeah, well, that's, that's right. But the Toby Green one, I think we understood after the Peter Wright incident, even though I still believe those actions are an instinctive <laughs> reflex motion. <laughs> but, well, they are. You do the same discussion every week. I know. It's, and it's, they're still getting weak. So I understand that. That's so what I said. we've got to adjust, don't we? You got to. You keep saying you've got to adjust, but I'm saying, to, I'm saying to you, sometimes on a footy field, they're instinctive. You can't say, you can't plan to adjust in that moment when it's an instinctive reflex reaction. But unfortunately, players are going to keep getting suspended for those sorts of I, acts. I, I'm in your camp. I feel for the player who's leading up to the ball. I mean, Jack was talking about the Liam Baker one against uh, the Sydney Swans. Malik, and that was the complete reverse. It's, it's the player leading up to the ball who has to suddenly change yeah. his desire because someone, I know they're showing courage, but yeah. you can now actually go back with the flight with greater surety, can't you? Because you've got to be looked after. Yep. I don't know what the solution is. But well, if you have time to brace, you've got time to take an, some other evasive action that doesn't put the other bloke in hospital. Simple as that. You just can't do that anymore. I'm sorry, guys, but that is, that is outlawed. That is gone. We've, we've retired two more players this year. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Do we need to lose? I mean, if, if he had gone free at the mark, Toby Green, his elbow was out, he would probably elbow Boyd in the head and knock him out, which he'd be allowed to do because he wouldn't Fair get game. suspended for that. So you're not, really protecting, you're not really protecting the player coming back in so that instance. go with your knees and well, that's fine. Well, that's right. It's easier to say, but some of these players, we'll still keep seeing it because it's, it's an instinctive uh, reflex reaction at the very last second when you're about to, uh, when you're about to collide with the player running the other way.